My name is Mark Schlegel Preheim and I'm recording this in Iowa City, Iowa, where I moved recently with my family. And before that, I lived in Boise, Idaho the last 10 years where I was pastor of Hyde Park Mennonite Fellowship and also had the privilege of helping run a homeless daytime shelter there for our Idaho citizens experiencing homelessness. And I'll be presenting the videos for April as we move towards Holy Week. The scripture we're looking at this week is from Matthew 26, 36 to 46, where Jesus takes his disciples to Gethsemane to pray in preparation for all that is to come, his arrest, his betrayal, his torture, and eventual execution, to pray that this might not have to happen. His, he asks his disciples to stay awake with him while he prays, but three times they fall asleep. In looking at the leader guide for this session, I appreciate the share questions and think these could generate some good and deep discussion as you move into this scripture. Though I would make sure that your group ethos has the capability of sharing and holding what people might share to some of these questions. If you're going to ask members of your group about Gethsemane moments in their life, make sure that your group is able to hold such a space where people might share such vulnerable and wound moments in their lives. If you're more of a study group where people don't normally share such personal experiences, I would be cautious of using these opening questions. Let's look ahead to Jesus's prayer in the garden. In this scene, we see and experience Jesus's full humanity. He knows what is on the horizon for himself and he longs for it to be a different way, for there to be another way forward. I remember my professor at Heston College, Marion Bontrager, explaining discipleship from an Anabaptist Mennonite perspective as faithfulness. Faithfulness to the God we meet in Jesus Christ. Not worrying so much about effectiveness, simply to faithfulness. And here in this prayer of Jesus, I think we see a model of faithfulness. Jesus trying to continue forward by living into God's dream, a way of living, teaching, and loving that is going to mean his arrest and eventual death. And he is aware of this. And there in the garden, he seeks to remain faithful despite whatever fear, anguish, or grief he might be experiencing. If I were leading a group discussion on this, I might ask people what other examples of such faithfulness they can think of. People who, in faithfulness to God's dream, continued on their path despite facing the threat of arrest or even death. It seems that so often those who are seeking to truly change the systems of domination in our world can can only do so when they are able to continue to follow God's dream despite fear and the threat of death or arrest. And so what other examples might we think of, of such faithfulness? And then in looking at Jesus's prayer, it is interesting to note that he repeats it three times. It almost seems to me as much of a mantra as a prayer a prayer of preparation, that he will be able to do what he believes he must, that he can do God's will in this moment, that he can remain peaceful, calm, and composed, that he will be able to show love to those who oppose him, betray him, deny him, and beat him. Sometimes such prayers of preparation, they express our desire for who we long to be, for what we long to do. There was a long time when every day on my way driving into the homeless shelter where I worked, I would pray over and over again, God, let me be a vessel of your love today. God, let me be a vessel of your love today. A prayer of preparation for what is about to come. I know other pastors who preparing to go into a situation that they know might be tense or difficult, simply pray as they prepare, I stand before what is with an open heart. 
Or a friend of mine who was a chaplain in a prison told me that he would often pray when he was having a hard time with a particular inmate. He would pray, God, I thank you for, and insert their name, they are a gift. Help me receive them as such. And he would pray this prayer again and again. Jesus' prayer in the garden, it brings to mind peacemakers. Peacemakers coming together to prepare themselves before engaging in a nonviolent direct action. To be a vessel of peace, to be an instrument of love in the face of hatred, one must be prepared. Before our sisters and brothers went to desegregate lunch counters, before they marched across bridges, before they rode on freedom buses, they prepared. With song, prayer, with role playing and practice, they prepared as best they could for insults, hatred and beatings. And peacemakers all over the world still do this before they act. And so we might ask folks in our group, when was the time you had to truly get yourself ready for something you did not want to do? For a situation you knew you had to face, but you did not want to? Perhaps a political action, a hard conversation, or walking with someone through death or divorce. And finally, we think of the disciples in this story and their action or perhaps inaction in the garden. And I must say that I could relate to the disciples. For how many times have I or we fallen asleep when we were praying or trying to pray? And likely what is at the heart of falling asleep is the feeling that maybe we should care more about something than we do. Clearly the disciples do not recognize the urgency of the situation that Jesus is in. They must not recognize how dire and urgent things are, how imminent the betrayal and arrest. As Father Herbert McCabe has said, people on sinking ships have many problems to complain about, but falling asleep while they are praying is not one of them. If we are falling asleep while we pray, then perhaps, says McCabe, we are praying for the wrong things. And what I hear in Jesus' frustration is not just that his disciples have failed to pray, but that they continue to fail to feel the gravity of what is happening, that they don't feel the intensity as he does. Why aren't you as distraught as I am? Don't you see how terrible the situation is? Why aren't you working as hard as I am? For the disciples, staying awake to pray likely feels more like something they should do as opposed to something they are feeling urgently. And so we might ask our group, why are the disciples feeling things less urgently? What signs are they missing? Or we could take this a step further to ask ourselves, what are some things that we recognize we feel less urgently about than others? Things like climate change or gun crisis or something happening in our church or family we don't all feel the same things happening around us with the same intensity, and this often can cause tension in relationships, families, and congregations. These are some of the key points that stuck out to me as I explored this familiar text once again. I might conclude this lesson with a prayer of preparation of some type to send folks out with, or perhaps by singing together, Were You There? as we prepare to move towards Holy Week and Jesus' death. May the Spirit be with you as you prepare to help unfold this deeply human story of Christ Jesus. Amen.